Queensland wet tropical forest is the largest remaining area of lowland tropical rainforest in Australia. Here, lush green rainforests stand next to white sandy beaches and crystal clear streams flow to coral reefs. Many ferns and trees and animals are just as they were millions of years ago. These seeds grow into a flowering tree called Idiospermum australiensis. When it first evolved here at Cape Tribulation 135 million years ago, Australia was still part of a mighty rainforest supercontinent called Gondwana land. And about 70 million years ago, this supercontinent split up and Africa, Madagascar and India drifted north, New Zealand moved to the east, leaving Australia, Antarctica and South America joined. About 60 million years ago, Australia split away and drifted northward through drier latitudes and a much cooler global climate. The eucalyptus, acacia and the other flora so unique to Australia evolved from these rainforests as they retreated to the wetter east coast. In this area here at Cape Tribulation, the primary forests have remained much as they were then. So these seeds, which are found only in this tiny wet area, are among the world's first flowering plants, virtually unchanged in 135 million years. Here we are in a living museum. A thousand trees to the acre and ferns on all of them of every conceivable kind. Animals like the cassowary, this bird is a living relic of a time when Australia was covered with rainforest and they have remained virtually unchanged since that time. These forests also contain 30% of the Australian marsupial species, 60% of our bat species, 29% of our frog species. They also contain 62% of Australia's butterfly species. There are even here 190 tree species that are so recently discovered that they have not yet been named. Rainforest, this cradle of evolution, contains half of the world's 10 million species of plants and animals. We humans also had our beginnings here in the forest. The forest is the primary source for all sorts of things that we use every day. Whether it be the coffee 
or fruit or fruit juice that you have for breakfast or pharmaceuticals like aspirin, quinine or birth control pills, even industrial products like rubber and gums, resins, tannins and oils. We use one or another of these forest-derived ingredients each time we apply aftershave or lipstick, when we read a glossy magazine or mail a letter, listen to a record, use a squash ball or put on our jogging shoes. Rainforests have a stabilising effect on, on climate and on soils. They also have a great ability to act as a sponge in retaining water. They are, in fact, ancient green machines that have developed into the most diverse and complex ecosystems on Earth. My childhood living in this area I've explored up into the mountains and along the beaches and into the mangroves and it's just really wonderful finding out about all these new plants and the birds and the seeds and just it's really wonderful. In the forest of bells and silver echoes my spirit's caught dancing on a shining stream Hallway of trees damp with glistening laughter Shadow dancer in the leaves The butterfly of dreams There's a peace quietness, there's an inner, an inner tranquility which comes when I sit in a rainforest and I listen to the birds, I look at the trees and I, there's, it's just an aura, it, it takes, it takes possession of you. On diamond blue feathers and wings of love, the bird of paradise went about Tapestry cocoon She circled the moon Landed in the forest where I lay I was hoping she might carry Rainforests throughout the world are disappearing at the rate of 15 million hectares a year. That's 22 hectares a minute. A football field every second. It's estimated that if the present rate of destruction continues, tropical forests will be gone within a single human lifetime. This would alter our climate, change the global ecosystem, and result in massive species extinction, damaging the very fabric of life. 
It is not surprising that scientists all over the world are alerting people to the catastrophic effect this loss will have for the Earth. When we chop down a tropical forest, or in fact destroy any area of natural habitat, what we're basically doing is sawing off the limb that we're sitting on. We are attacking our very own life support systems. And one of the sad things in Australia is that she has already degraded her life support systems to the point where future generations of Australia are going to pay, Australians are going to pay a very high price. I believe our children and our grandchildren will look back upon the 1980s as the time when people allowed one of the most remarkable phenomena ever to appear on the face of the earth to disappear completely and so needlessly. You see, the rainforests are the only large ecosystems in the world which still in parts of the continents are really near to nature or even natural, are not very much influenced by man. And man should not uh, go on with destruction of all natural ecosystems on the earth. So we should conserve as much as possible of the complexes of tropical rainforest. Nations have two choices, to carry on as they are and face by the turn of the century an environmental catastrophe which will witness devastation as complete, as irreversible as any nuclear holocaust. Or to begin now in earnest a cooperative effort to use rationally and fairly the world's resources. A hundred years ago in Australia, the forests appeared a vast, limitless frontier. The scrub, as it was called, was seen either as a never-ending resource or as a nuisance. And man, with his newfound technology and pioneering spirit, took to it with axe and flame. A farm wasn't considered improved till all the trees were cleared. Progress was measured in the number of factories, ever-expanding roads, railways and bridges opening up the wilderness. In this way, more than three quarters of Australia's rainforest has been destroyed. And now, so little remains that it would all fit into a circle of a mere 70 kilometres radius. It's only recently that Australians have begun to realise that rainforest is irreplaceable and worth preserving. This is Terrania Creek in the Nightcap National Park in northern New South Wales. And this rainforest is now included in the UNESCO World Heritage List, along with the Grand Canyon in America, the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania, and Mount Everest in Nepal. Only a few years ago, this area was to be logged, and it was only stopped by the intervention of local conservationists. For five years, they wrote letters, carried out studies, and held meetings, all of which did nothing to stop the Forestry Commission's plan. And so, in 1979, 300 protesters finally placed themselves between the forest they loved and the logging company's bulldozer. The government's response was to send in 150 police. Sixty couples bright and blue crawling through the mud and dew on hands and knees and to the children's altar. Polished battle black boot men stamping through the fairies' glen, cursing as they cross us in the water. And I swear that the sun won't shine today, not a mind you better. Come on, 
absolutely vicious, brutal. They've been throwing us in the bush, dragging, dragging us on the ground. ground. Kids, children really crying. I mean, they've been not bloody not crying. Not bloody crying. Why are we are sitting here asking for an environmental impact study, that's all. If that's worth keeping 200 police up here for two weeks, let them explain that to the electorate. The issue is uh, whether the... Uh... Uh, the will of the uh, state government is going to prevail or the will of the people of Terrania Creek. It's, uh, uh, in effect, these people have uh, taken on the state government. Look at it, force can't win the day. Force can only lose the day for all of us. Because if this goes on, the way I see it is we all lose. We're losing a valuable resource in this country. And more, worse than that, we're losing the, the principle that uh, legitimate means, you know, can have effect. We want to know why you're, none of your officers here are wearing numbers, sir. No, I'm afraid I can't make any comment. A contingent of 100 police arrived at the scene early this morning in a fleet of some 20 cars, a bus and five paddy wagons. The task of the police was to ensure that a bulldozer brought to the forest last Friday could resume work on the reopening of a logging track to be used by sawmillers. About 300 people, mostly local new settlers, demonstrated peacefully in protest. <laughs> game that's being played here at the moment. Before that tree fell, it was quite obvious that there were people down in that area, but the tree fell anyway. Now, they'd cut it part way through, and uh, there was nothing they could do to stop it. But even so, there were people down in that area when that tree fell. And for God's sake, I hope none of them were under it.
took Terania Creek to really focus our attention on the fact that, first of all, trees can't be replaced, that they are such uh, an important part of our natural heritage, but also that there are people, not in the hundreds, but in the hundreds of thousands, who love those rainforests and were prepared to get out and fight for them. Uh, politics in terms of the environment has never quite been the same since. This is Australia's land. This land belongs to Australian people. I am an Australian person. I am an Australian senator, and I am going to walk up that road. Today in Australia, conservation has become a real political force. It's not uncommon to see doctors, lawyers, and politicians standing up, being arrested, jailed, and even shot at in defence of our forest and wilderness areas. It was here in the beautiful, remote, temperate rainforest wilderness of southwest Tasmania that the spirit of Terrania was next expressed. The Franklin River, a vision of whole and unaffected nature, became the scene of the biggest environmental direct action ever to take place in the history of Australia. In 1982, the Hydroelectric Commission was set to dam the Franklin the same way it had dammed the Upper Gordon many years before, drowning forever the glorious Lake Pedder. The Australian people were not going to let the Franklin River go the same way. 3,000 people came here to protest, and over 1,000 were arrested and taken away. No dams rallies were held in every capital city and protesters jammed the streets. That if you look at the dam as a dam, it is at one and the same time an environmental obscenity and an economic absurdity. In March 1983, the Australian Labor Party, who were committed to stopping the dam if elected, won government. So the spectacular Franklin River one of the most beautiful and wild places on earth, was left free to flow to the sea. I just feel great. This is, a, this is to me, this is uh, the, the warmest connection with the universe that we as human beings have. And everybody has this bond with nature. It's in all of us. And it makes you sing to be out here. It's inspiring. It's uh, challenging. It's, it's just uplifting.
children we are not an illusion we will never allow them to kill Thousands of people came from everywhere to take a stand in southwest Tasmania, and suddenly the campaign became part of the greatest uh, media event of the whole year. And there it was, the fight of the Franklin, on the front pages of newspapers, not only around Australia, but worldwide. We're lucky, we've got the education, the opportunity, the time, and the security here in Australia to have a phenomenal impact. And let's hope it is a beginning that will lead to bigger victories, not only in Australia, but elsewhere on the planet. It's not just a river, it's one of a kind. It's freedom you're killing here in the waters that you bind. We're not fools who stand here now, we are everyone. I swear the Franklin is the face of things to come. I swear the Franklin is the face of things to come. I swear the Franklin is the face of things to come. Even more abundant and diverse than the rainforests of Tasmania's southwest or the subtropical rainforests of northern New South Wales are the wet tropical forests of northern Queensland. Mother Nature's crown jewels. The top of a rainforest archipelago which is only a thousandth of Australia's land area and yet it is home to a third of all its species of plants and animals. Many pockets of forest have been identified as ancient remnants and rare living links with Gondwana land, a major stage in the Earth's evolutionary history. There are many species here which are rare, threatened and unstudied. This area is described by Professor Len Webb as one of the most significant regional ecosystems in the world and it urgently needs protection, as these wet tropical forests are disappearing at an alarming rate. There's a question that we must ask ourselves. Will the forest never fail? They've put a price on our heritage. In 20 years, it's another tale. To the reef, there's a promise we must keep to be sentries in our sleep. And no chainsaws will ever creep into the forest so deep. It's not yet time to weep. It seems so short a time since I saw you last. Present has come past. No forest stands before me now. Just a rusted dozer and a plow.
So here, at Cape Tribulation, the Queensland government decided to build a road right through the middle of a tropical rainforest national park, even though there is an alternative road only a short distance to the west. The reasons given were that the building of a coastal road would improve surveillance of drug trafficking, wildlife smuggling, illegal immigration, and even, according to Mr. Martin Tenney, the white slave trade. We will bring dozers in there if it needs be to clear this road up, and it will be needed. We will cut the tops of the ranges down if it's needed. And no hippie, no greenie, no environmentalist will stop that from happening. They can go their hardest, they can do what they like. They won't win. Outrage is the only word to describe the feelings of many local residents when told of the government's intention. I, I sort of felt the I felt as if the forest was calling for help, and I tried to ignore it. I got on my motor mower and started cutting grass and anything that made a lot of noise to, to keep the call, the screaming of the, what I felt was the forest screaming uh, for help, trying to drown it out, but I couldn't. I kept hearing it because it was inside. And uh, I, I uh, finally uh, found myself running towards where the... Uh, um, chainsawing and bulldozing was going on. I don't remember leaving the mower. I, I just must have jumped off and started running up the road. And someone grabbed me and, and calmed me down. I was going to take them on barehanded. It was obvious desperate action was required, and they dug in in the best Anzac tradition in order to buy time. Time for the annual rains to come and halt work on the road. Time for the weight of public opinion to support the federal government against the state government and stop the road as they had stopped the Franklin Dam. And time to present their case through the media to the people of Australia. It's the only place where the rainforest goes right from the mountains down to the reef in this particular ecological system. It's the only place in Australia. It's one of the few places in the world. Biologically, it's a genetic storehouse. It's, it's just very, very destructive to put the road through here. So we've been getting the holes every morning, ready for, ready for what's about to happen in the next hour or so, just waiting patiently. Are you feeling frightened or...? A, l a little bit, not too much, but I know everything's going to be all right. I know it's uh, plenty of friends are around, so fine, yeah. Everything's just, it's just fine. It's all time on our side, you know. We really just need time until the federal government will step in and stop this, at least, you know, for a little while so that it can be looked at properly and everyone will realise that it's just a ridiculous proposal. So, Cindy, in, in, you know how you bury in the hole, you're, you're chained to a block of concrete down there. Yeah, that's right. It can't be comfortable. Oh, it's, it's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Come to far north Queensland, where they're ripping off the reef, chopping all the forest down and selling it, good grief. But we have fun in the sun, it's better than none. We got to keep a step ahead of them until this race is run. My brother, keep a step ahead of them until this race is run. Yeah, we have fun in the sun. Life on the run The whole damn state is chasing me And I think it's just begun But we have fun in the sun It's better than none We got to keep a step ahead of them Until this race is run My brother, keep a step ahead of them Until this game is won Oh, my sister, keep a step ahead of them Until this race is run operation. Uh, there's uh, strong likelihood that people could be killed. Are you feeling frightened? Feeling frightened? It's all time on our side. And everyone will realise that it's just so ridiculous. So ridiculous. Sydney, uh, Sydney's got him as well. Uh, it's taking now four police to carry her out of the way. Michael's just been arrested from the whole 
as well. They've just got him out. He was the last person that had the galvanised iron used in front of him with the backhoe. Police stopped the media from filming any action beyond this point. As the road continued, so did the protest. One lone radio reporter slipped through the police cordon on what was to be the last confrontation by protesters in defence of this rainforest. Her name is Bronwyn Bashford. This is her report. After 8.30 on Saturday night, I'm walking along the beach at Cape Tribulation. I've got wet feet, but the idea is that we create a diversion so that some of the protesters can supply the guys up the trees with a little bit of food. moment there's about a hundred of us walking along the beach. There won't be any violence. Well, we hope there won't be any violence. It's very dark in a rainforest at night. At the moment, all the protesters and I, with my wet tennis shoes, we're kind of stumbling through the bush. It was really something spectacular to see and to actually be there. The protesters continued to sing and you could just see this line of candles going up the hill. Finally, we scrambled over the verge of the road. It was a little bit of a drop, confronting a Queensland policeman with his very large Alsatian, and they continued to sing. Yeah, we've all been told, as a direction, under the traffic act, the road is closed and you're to leave the road. Right? We have been warned that the protesters take any further steps forward. They will let the dogs go. Go now, or you'll be arrested. Get him off! Get him off! It's on the news. Just make sure you get the on the news. Tape's still rolling. Good on you. I don't know about me. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how far the dogs are behind us, but I really wouldn't like to think about it at the moment. I saw a protest myself, dragged down the street by the dog. I've never really done anything like this before. I think I'm reasonably petrified. Heavy-handed police tactics, huge fines, the media blackout, and lack of action by the federal government all took their toll. And after a year of resistance, the blockade collapsed and the bulldozers completed the road. The most extraordinary sensation to me driving down this road is a sense of almost really obscene intrusion the, the very fact that we're here defies the concept of wilderness. 
and wilderness is our essential common heritage. Without it, there is no sense of there being anything left of the planet that is not somehow intruded upon by our private purpose. There is nowhere that we can go and look at and say, there is the original wilderness. Surely there must be somewhere in these few tiny places that we have left where we do not need to thrust and intrude into this primeval world that we all share in this awful way. Look at this. This is not the desert, although you'd be forgiven for thinking so. It is the road in the dry season. Just below this road is the Great Barrier Reef, one of nature's most wonderful manifestations and prized by people the world over. Every year, the wet season comes to this part of the world with its cyclones and rainfall that is measured in metres. And every wet season, since this road was built, there have been thousands of tonnes of earth washed off the road and onto the reef below, condemning it to death by siltation. The federal government has described this road as an act of vandalism, but have done nothing to stop it. If these forests were to be listed with the World Heritage Commission, the damage could be stopped and in time it would heal. As Professor Endress wrote to the Australian Heritage Commission, the region is really a priceless and irreplaceable possession of mankind as a whole. A disturbance and destruction of the tropical forests of northern Queensland would be a global fraud to the future of mankind. But right now, for the wet tropical forests, it really is one minute to midnight. If it's kept being nibbled away at the edges, it'll shrink and shrink and shrink until there's uh, not enough left over to call it a wilderness. A wilderness has got to be of a certain size and people and, and things have to be kept on the borders of it. They can enjoy it, sure, but there must be no roads and, and no nothing going through the middle of it. That's the end of a wilderness. Time after time, in India, Philippines, Thailand, Colombia, Mexico, governments are saying, perhaps there are better ways to make money out of tropical forests without knocking them over and putting an end to them. If they are investigating new ways, then how much more Queensland, which is one of the richest places on earth, might also want to have a look before it uh, decides that the best way and really the only way they can make money out of those forests is by converting them into a board feet of timber and uh, give them over to mining interests. Because when you do that, you are saying in effect that we know better than all the researchers or scientists or the economists right into the future, all their ideas will not be as good as the ones we have now because we are taking a final decision on what is best for those forests. And if these forests disappear, then we will lose what we can call the most abundant and diversified stock of raw materials available to us on the face of the earth. We are in the middle of history now, and that, or even on the threshold of history, and that if we don't preserve these rainforests now, well, that's it. The ecology is the most critical science. In other words, mm. if, for example, we never cured cancer, humanity would go on forever. If we don't solve the ecological problems of the planet, humanity won't go on for more than another 50 right. or 100 yeah. years in, in anything like its present form. So uh, all this molecular biology, all the, uh, the war on cancer, the space shots and all, it's all trivial nonsense compared for the future of humanity compared to doing things like saving the rainforest and learning to live lightly on the planet, to live within the constraints set by the ecological systems. If we don't do that, we won't have to worry about cancer, space shots, or any of those things because it'll be all over.
the earth and the sea, our life support systems. And when you see them like this, so full of life, it's awful to think of what this would be like if they were spoilt or destroyed. We are living in truly momentous times. Right now, we are losing 20 species each day, possibly more. Now, if this continues, by the time our children have grown up, we will have lost a third of all the species on Earth. I believe that humankind cannot exploit and cage and clear fell the wilds without simultaneously somehow crushing the diversity, the spirit and the creative capacity in ourselves. There is hope if we can meet this challenge and respond to this crisis. We will save the wild species and the wilderness from extinction through a simple decision on the part of people throughout the world who care enough to push and prod governments into taking action on behalf of everyone. To immediately stop the abuse of the remaining virgin rainforests and to phase out rainforest logging entirely. We must safeguard them for future generations as the heritage of the world. Shadow dancer in the leaves 